All right, now we're going to take a look at shared folders. Uh, basically, our shared folders are places where we have files stored out on our server. Uh, a lot of times at the office, you might have network drives that you would reference these. Uh, for example, our data drive is F. Our tech drive is T. Uh, so you may just have to take a look at these to, to kind of reacquaint yourself with uh, what's what. Uh, but this is a, a pretty cool uh method to get and also upload files. So if you wanted to work on a file from home or you went out and you met a client, you forgot uh, an Excel file or something that you wanted to, to review with them, you could log into your remote web workplace, uh, hop into their client folder, download the file, uh, throw it up on the screen and go to town. Uh, heck, you can make changes on it and then upload it back to the location uh, so it's uh, up and running there when uh, when you get back to the office. So for now, let's just click on the shared folders link, and that'll just open up all the different shares that uh, that we have access to. All right, so it shows our server here, SBS server, and then these are all of our different folders we have access to. Uh, you can also use the search function up top to find something that you're looking for. Uh, right now, we'll just go ahead and we'll open up our tech folder and uh, see what we've got out there. And I'm going to open this up by double-clicking on it. All right, so inside our tech folder, we have printer drivers. Uh, we'll go ahead and double-click on that one and see what we have inside that. All right, so here are different folders. Uh, and uh, I would assume we have printer drivers in each one of these folders because these are the printers that we have in our office. Uh, so this is just an example of... Uh, browsing through folders just like you would on an F drive or a, a Z drive or a T drive, whatever drives you have uh, at the office, uh, you can cruise through through these just like you would them. Uh, let's go up and uh, click on Upload uh, to take a look at uh, how we would end up getting a file uh, out to this area. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll click on the Browse button, uh, and you can add files uh, one at a time or multiple files at a time that you want to get into uh, this printer drivers folder. So here the choose file to upload window pops up. So this is uh, something you're probably used to seeing uh, whenever you open a file. Uh, you can browse around on the computer that you're uh, accessing, uh, double click a file, and uh, it'll go into the list there and you'll just click OK and bam, the file will get uploaded to uh, to your folder. Uh, in this case, we're not going to upload anything. We'll just click Cancel here and uh, go back to this main screen. You'll see at the top we have our home, shared folders, tech, printer drivers, upload, uh, basically showing the, you the path that we've uh, taken to get here. So if we wanted to go back to the tech folder, uh, we could just go right back to tech. If we wanted to go back to the home page, click on home, it'll take you there. If we wanted to go to share f shared folders where we had all of our different uh, main uh, file locations on the server, we could click that. Uh, for now, we will just click, uh, click tech. All right, so we are back to our tech folder uh, where we have our printer drivers. And uh, that pretty much sums up our crash course on the uh, folder access. Again, play around with it. Upload a file, download a file. Uh, if you're going to delete a file, just make sure you uh, don't really need it because it will delete. Uh, but go ahead and uh, we'll go back to home uh, by clicking on the home button up top. All right, so we're back at our home page. Uh, in the bottom left, you'll see the organization links. You'll see the administration links. Uh, let's just, just go ahead and these are basically favorites uh, or shortcuts to different websites. We'll just go down and we'll click on uh, our company's homepage. So our homepage will open up in a new window. So of course, whenever you uh, are done browsing on whatever website uh, you open up, it'll uh, of course be back at our remote web workplace. So uh, here's our website and uh, don't worry, we're user friendly. So we will go ahead and uh, close this website down for now, and it will be back at our remote web workplace. And then for the fun of it, we'll go ahead and we'll click another link on our uh, list. Uh, we'll open up our management system. And there we go. So we'll close this one out now. All right, so the last area to cover is the computers. And it is true, save the best for last. 
Uh, this is definitely one of the cool things about Remote Web Workplace. Uh, this is basically remote desktop through this web interface. Uh, a lot of times to remotely access your computer with a remote desktop in the past, you would have to VPN in, and then once you're VPNed into the network, then you would be able to use remote desktop to connect. Uh, well, this, uh, with, with the VPN, it was a little scary for, uh, for tech people such as us, uh, because when you connect into that office, uh, say you're at a a computer that uh, your, your your children and maybe some friends and all that fun stuff use at home, and uh, they ended up getting a little bit of spyware, some viruses, things like that. And then you go and you use your VPN connection, and you basically link your home computer there into the uh, into the office network. And there's a, of course a potential security risk there. Uh, but what this does is basically allow you to use remote desktop through this web interface, and you don't even need a VPN. Uh, if you haven't used remote desktop before, uh, if you've heard of services like GoToMeeting, uh, LogMeIn, GoToMyPC, things like that, uh, they're all kind of like web-based remote access systems that allow you to uh, to take control of your computer remotely. Uh, the really nice thing about using remote desktop, though, is there, there's a lot of extra bells and whistles that you have to pay for on the other ones. Uh, printing, for an example, is a big one. Uh, with remote desktop, your printers will actually sync up. So if you're at home sitting there and you have a little HP uh, all-in-one printer, scanner, copier thing uh, on your on your desk, uh, and you log into your work computer, uh, you pull up a document, you would actually be able to print it right to that computer without too many bells and whistles, uh, any special settings, things like that. Um, if they have some weird printer drivers, then the, the tech guys might need to install them on your machine, but that's that's that usually doesn't happen. So for this example, let's go ahead and click on computers. Now, typically, you're not going to see this big old list of computers. Uh, the reason I see them is because I am a, well, a server admin, so I get to see all the computers we have at the office. Uh, typically, you would only see your computer, maybe a, a handful of computers that you uh, you work on. Uh, also, depending on the computer name, that could also get confusing if, for example, the, the first one on the list is mine, and that's the Dell service tag, which is uh, my computer's name. Uh, so it's it's pretty easy if uh, you're just a, a normal uh, normal computer user. You only see yours there, so you only really have one option to uh, to click on. But I will go ahead and we'll click on mine. All right. So what's going to happen is the remote desktop connection software is going to fire up. Uh, basically, it gives you a little warning. Are uh, you sure you want to connect to this machine? Yada yada yada. Uh, you can, if you're going to keep using this over and over again, you might want to check the box that says "Don't ask me again," uh, and then click Connect. So now it's going to ask you for your password. Uh, since you were logged into Remote uh, Web Workplace, it already knows your username, so it knows I'm Brian Schrift. Uh, so all I have to do now is enter my password and click OK. Now, here's the disappointing part. I can't actually show you this because my uh, recording software I'm using is not going to record a remote desktop session. But I'll give you a play-by-play. -play. Uh, my computer at the office will load. Uh, it's the exact same computer I sit down at uh, that every day. I can click on my Outlook. I can click on my instant messaging program. I can open up uh, Adobe uh, contribute and edit some websites, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, F drives, T drives, Z drives, the whole nine yards. It's basically like I'm sitting in front of my computer. Uh, for those of you familiar with remote desktop, you already know uh, the, the capabilities of it. Uh, for those of you who aren't, it literally sends your keyboard, your mouse, your monitor, and any sounds uh, back over the internet connection through remote desktop, and you're basically uh, remote controlling your computer. Uh, you can restart it. You can, like I said, it's it's basically like you're sitting in front of it. And I, I wish I could show you, but uh, unfortunately I can't. But hopefully you get the idea that it is really cool. And then after you close out of the remote desktop connection, I'm just going to click on my home at the top. It's going to take me again right back to my uh, remote web workplace. Uh, you can click the sign out button if you want to, or uh, just close on out of. Uh, out of Internet Explorer, and you are good to go. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the crash course 
on a remote web workplace. Uh, again, this is the version that comes with uh, Small Business Server 2011. Uh, Small Business Server 2008 uh, has many of these components. Uh, I'm not sure about the shared folders, though, but uh, there are some, some minor differences. And again, with the 2011, you'll have the newest version of Exchange with the extra bells and whistles in the Outlook web access. Uh, have a good day, and uh, feel free to check out our website, www.precisionbs.com. Thank you.